The political wheel of fortune is turning and the Liberal Democrats think they can end up on top at the looming general election. A bit of chanting, so please do head up the hill. Several Conservative and Labour MPs have defected to the party following the Brexit fallout, with more rumoured tonight at the party's conference in Bournemouth. Our door is always open to people who share our values. We're looking forward to a very optimistic, good conference. Sun shining outside, shining inside too. The Lib Dem leader, Jo Swinson, says she backs a new pluralist politics, but there are challenges. The chairwoman of the party's LGBT plus group has quit in protest after former Conservative Minister Philip Lee was welcomed into the Lib Dems despite in the past backing an amendment banning migrants with HIV from entering the UK. Obviously it was his amendment that he put forward on HIV plus migrants and I found that extremely homophobic and xenophobic but also quite a lot of the rest of his voting record was just it's a voting record that's fine if you're a Tory but it's not in the slightest bit liberal so I had a lot of concerns about his previously stated views. Mr Lee will meet LGBT activists this week and the party attempted to defuse the row with announcements on equal marriage. I've met with members of the PLUS community. Um, clearly, we need to listen to their concerns, take them very seriously. We've already learned from them, and I feel very confident that, you know, had Philip Lee been an MP with the Liberal Democrats six years ago at the time when these amendments were put down, that those conversations that he's now having as part of our member-led Liberal Democrat conference, maybe he would have thought differently about how some of those amendments were phrased. Whatever the tensions, the party leadership believes the rising tide of opposition to Brexit will lift all boats here. The Lib Dems are defining themselves with a bold proposal to revoke Article 50 altogether. They'll vote on that tomorrow. Well, with me now is the former Conservative MP Sarah Wollaston, who left the Tories for the new Change UK party in February and joined the Lib Dems a month ago. Um, we're hearing a lot about a potential defection yes. tonight. Uh, do you know who it is? Uh, no, I don't, but I do know there are a lot of very unhappy Conservative colleagues and former colleagues. And I would say just look at this. This place is like a breath of fresh air, and this party is too. So I hope that many more of them will follow. Are you talking to some of the so-called Rebel Alliance who voted to block no deal, a no-deal Brexit? I've spoken to very many um, Conservative colleagues who are deeply unhappy about the direction of the party, and any one of them I'd be delighted to see come across and join us. Quite a lot of unhappy yeah. activists here, though, about yeah. Philip Lee, your uh, former Conservative colleague, and his stance uh, on gay rights. Um, your stance on welfare might cause some alarm as well. I mean, the party here has been talking about welfare mm -hmm. today. You voted quite, quite often to cut welfare benefits. Oh, of course. And I mean, I think that I regret that we didn't end austerity sooner. Of course I do. And I think the point is now, where are we right now? Of course, going forward, we need to be in a position to reverse austerity. And it's going to be absolutely impossible to do that if we go into a catastrophic no deal. But a, a former Conservatives mm. like you, are you cuckoos in the nest in the Lib Dems? No, not or at all. No, not at all. And in fact, of course, many of us were arguing for years about changes. In fact, I did um, was the sole Tory to vote against one of the important changes that we wanted to see in universal credit. So I did vote against the party line for that and have spent a long time arguing for changes. So uh, the, the point is that you stay within a party and you get to the point where you realise that, that trying to change things from within is no longer possible. The party has moved in such a different place that you realise that it's time to leave. Do so you feel now you're, you've have found your I spiritual feel, home? I've, I feel like I've come home. And as I say, this is like sunshine and a breath of, breath of fresh air. To have a, have a party that genuinely is interested in having evidence-led policy making, listens to its members, votes on policies, uh, unlike the Conservative Party conference where you were pretty much told uh, what the policy was going to be. It was formulated in a, in a small room with no reference to those of us in the party who had been speaking and campaigning on things like health and social care for years. Well, a vote tomorrow on Brexit. You've long spoken out for a second referendum. The leadership here doesn't want any of that, wants to just revoke Article this 50. Is, this is the position if we're in a general election. Of course, if we have a second referendum, 
unequivocally the Liberal Democrats will be voting to remain in the European Union. But if we get to a general election without a second referendum, then the position has to be absolutely clear, and that will be a vote for the Liberal Democrats is to stop Brexit. Isn't that pretty illiberal, actually, and undemocratic? When people have voted in a referendum, and you're just going, oh, well, cancel that, we're just going to make you do it again. I think people are sick and tired of Brexit. Absolutely. People say to me more than anything else, just make it go away, make it stop. And, um, and they're really deeply unhappy. No particular version of Brexit has majority support either in Parliament or in the, in the wider country. And people now have much more information about the scale of the damage, for example, from No Deal. If you look at the Yellowhammer documents, it's staggering that any sensible government would even dream of inflicting that kind of chaos. But isn't so, it, the mood isn't shifting in the country, is it? Voters remain voters and not sort of... Uh, sorry, leave voters, not in droves back in Remain now. Um, but what I would say is that those, when we get to a general election, those voters will be able to vote for a party that supports their position. And so I don't agree that it's undemocratic to make this part of a general election. We would, we've always said we'd prefer to have a referendum because then you can separate out the issue of Brexit. But we all accept we're heading for a general election and when that happens we want people to be clear. We don't want the chaos of the Labour position or a cliff edge. We want clarity of saying that we would, we would end stop Brexit. And briefly, our mm -hmm. top story tonight, you said voters were sick and tired of talking about Brexit. Well, David Cameron says it's left him feeling depressed. Do you believe that he regrets well, what I, happened? I think he should be regretting the conduct of the campaign itself and the lack of clarity about exactly what Brexit meant. And we now know that it wasn't the easiest deal in history, that you can't have a cake and eat it Brexit. There's a whole series of trade-offs and compromises, and that was never properly spelt out to people. So I, I'm not surprised he's having some sleepless nights because the division's been horrendous. Sarah Wallison, thanks Thank very you. much for joining me. Uh,